Hey guys, welcome back to Buddy RC. My name is Clay, and today we're gonna to be talking about the M5 more in depth. So as you saw in our last video, we did the unboxing of it and kind of showed the parts of it and then showed it a little bit together. This time we're gonna dive into it a lot more. I'm gonna show you guys my setup and then hopefully at the end of the video, we're gonna do a little flight. Um, I also have the M4 Max here to kind of compare because uh, there's a lot of similarities between the two. Um, so if you have an M4 Max, this kind of shows you it's not that hard to build a little bit bigger of a helicopter uh, with about the same kind of you know skill required for the M4. All right guys, so now we got the canopies off here. I can kind of show you guys a little bit more in depth of both helicopters. So as you can see, this is a gear driven helicopter because it is a bigger helicopter. And then of course you have the M4 Max uh, has this large diameter uh, direct drive motor. So there's a first difference in the two, of course, but the main thing with the M5 is it uses the same kind of geometry for the servos. So all the servos are able to be, you know, easily, um, gotten to so you don't have to take off anything to get to your servo to get to your back servo you can even get through here um, and go through the back to take it off uh, to, if you need to adjust your you know linkage or something like that it's not that hard it's really easy to get to you don't have to kind of take the whole head off just to get to one servo so they're all super easy to get to we want to make sure it was easy to work on and also of course easy to build um, so that's one similarity it shares between the m4 max and m4 uh, with the m5 and m6 so all the differences kind of stop there besides the tail of course um, so you have the you know mainframe that we showed before that's chamfered um, that's one really big thing on this um, you actually have a tube uh, style landing gear so you do need to put them together they're not one piece like the m4 um, and of course you have you know, your gear driven motor. Um, so you do have your adjustments right here. Um, I'll show those in more depth. Um, also the servo stack, like I said before, it's made for 15 millimeters out of the box. There will be a 20 millimeter upgrade. So out of the box, you can run these A15, 1810 servos on the cyclic. We have them in stock at buddyrc.com. Like I said before, I'll have a link to everything down below uh, for my setup like I did in the last video. Um, so just kind of showing you guys what I'm using. Um, but I'm using the 155 amp ESC from Sunny Sky and this thing has got a ton of power. I've beaten this thing up a lot. Um, so far, I've had no issues with heat or anything. I can touch the motor after a full flight um, and I can, the ESC is cool to the touch, but again, it's been cold outside. Um, but that fan definitely kicks when you plug it in. I mean, it's got some power to it. Um, so I'm running the 4518 1100 kV motor. Of course, I'm running on 6S as well. For the power system, I mean, it's got plenty of power. I'm running at like 60% throttle, if that, um, and it's, it's almost too much power for me. I like a little bit lower head speed. Um, like on my 700, I only run like 1700 at the max. Um, and that's kind of my favorite, you know, RPM to stay in. I don't do a lot of like hardcore smack 3D stuff unless it's a smaller helicopter. On the bigger ones, I like to take it a little easy. But um, as far as the power pack, I do run the little, uh, I think it's the 25F backup capacitor from OMP Hobby. We have those as well. I'll put those down below. It fits perfect in here and you can even get to the button um, and turn it off right there. So when you uh, lose power, say if your ESC or something happens um, and your low voltage cut off, cuts off the voltage going to the servos, this little guy takes over and you have about a minute to land basically. So you can auto it in and then land it. Don't have to worry about losing the helicopter because low voltage cutoff hit. Um, so I'm also running the Nexus on this, like we talked about before. So I'm running with a TX-16. Um, it flies great on the Nexus. I absolutely love it. Plenty of uh, power, like I said, with this setup um, for hardcore 3D, if you want to do hardcore 3D. Um, but as it sits, I this setup is great uh, for what I do. Uh, so for me, I really don't like running two batteries. So the M6, it is a option. So you can run 12S stuff. You can have a lot more you know, power and you can run the 600 millimeter, or I think they're 610 millimeter blades. Me personally, I really enjoy running one battery. It makes it easier for charging and it makes it easier when you go out to the field, I can have more batteries and you know, make it easy. The M5 does come with two battery trays in the box with two sets of battery straps. So all you gotta do is you know, put your battery on there and you already have two straps. Uh, sets and then two battery trays out of the box. So it's really nice that they included two of them. Um, also another neat feature on this guy, it's just like the M7, so you have your tensioner here, 
Um, that's something that isn't on the M4. M4 and M4 Max use just a regular, you know, pulling the, the actual uh, boom itself to tension it. Um, so that is another difference. But uh, this is my favorite feature of the M7 is the tensioner. Uh, on a bigger helicopter, you normally would have to have your friend hold onto the helicopter and you yank the boom and then have them quickly tighten it down after you did that. No more doing that. You can just put like a medium tension on there. You can kind of feel it with your finger and then you can tune it in uh, with the actual tensioner itself. Um, so back to the tail. Um, it's the same as the M7. Again, just shrunken down. Uh, so yeah, we have the, the, the dynamic weights on the back that work as like power steering for your servo. Um, but it's a lot of the same stuff as the M7 and M4 just kind of combined. It's the best of both worlds, in my opinion. Makes this helicopter very easy to assemble. Um, it's of course not as big as an M7, so it is a little bit more cost effective. Um, so that's kind of the idea with this. You could run a 6S pack on it, so you don't need to buy two packs for it. Um, you can run a smaller you know, system on it. You can run smaller servos that are lighter um, and a little bit cheaper. And you don't have to really worry about, you know, getting 12S packs and flying that kind of stuff. Uh, one more thing about this, I think I touched it in the unboxing. This is actually painted on now, which is nice. So you don't need to worry about um, actually putting the stickers on. Um, and same for these, this is painted on as well. I think they're gorgeous. It's bright, it's easy to see. Same thing for the tail fin. The tail fin itself is actually painted. Um, they're, not, um, they're not stickers anymore like the M7 was. So it's super, super bright. Um, we're running the 96 millimeter tail, uh, tail blades on it um, and then the 560 main blades. That will be what comes with the kits um, if you buy the kit with blades. Um, so they fit perfectly on there and the M6 I believe just comes with the 610s versus it, it still comes with the 96 millimeter tails. Um, but as far as this helicopter you know, being really innovative, I mean in my opinion the way the, the frames go together. Um, you'll see it a little bit more in depth. I'm gonna zoom in on stuff here. The frames themselves, uh, of course they're chamfered, like I said before, it's a really neat feature, but um, instead of having a battery tray, you know, mount on both sides, you actually just use uh, the carbon buildup. Uh, so there's actually three different side panels for the helicopter that you kind of sandwich together and then it makes a little slot and that's where your battery actually slides in, which is really nice. Uh, makes it super simple, it's carbon on carbon, so it's it's, actually not that bad um, you could put a little bit of uh, of grease on it if you want but i've had no issues with mine i can you know get it to go down with one finger and it slides right in uh, so yeah that that right there is one of my favorite parts so you don't have to worry about oh i broke a battery tray it's it's all built into the frame and the frame sides themselves so it's super easy to you know slide in and slide out um, it only uses one of these on the m5 i don't know about the m6 i haven't built one yet I believe that one uses two since it is a 12S set, um, uh, you know, 12S pack. But it uses the same kind of side frame, so it uses the sandwich plates um, styles just like this. Uh, so there's no need to, you know, put a piece of plastic in there or something. It's just built into it. It's less parts, less weight, and that's all this thing is about. Less weight, less parts, cheaper on the wallet for a bigger helicopter. As, as I said before, the servo stack is made to be easy to work on. So you can get to all the servos from the back, from the sides with no way of, you know, getting, oh, I gotta take this thing off to get to this. There's nothing needed to take off. You can get right to all the servos from every which way. So it's super simple to, you know, work on even your elevator servo. Most helicopters have an elevator servo placed for some reason facing the opposite way. Uh, they did a really good job making sure that these are all in the same direction so you can get to them fairly easily. Um, you know, where there's actually a hole to work on them. The head is, like I said before, very similar to the M7, just shrunken down. 12 millimeter main shaft, M7 style swash plate, so you have those white markers like you did on the other one with the carbon plate on the top holding it all together in a beautiful piece of artwork on the top of the helicopter. Um, but like I said, all these are just shrunken down M7 type pieces. Uh, so you have your oiler uh, on the side here so you can put your you know, grease and stuff in there for your thrust bearings, which is very nice. Um, it comes with two sets of dampers. It comes with the palm dampers um, or the O-rings. I went with the O-rings. I don't really fly high head speed stuff. So there's no real need for the you know, palm dampers in my opinion for me. So the head itself is fairly similar. Uh, like I said about the swash plate, um, and then coming up to the head, you do have the hash marks just like you do on the M7, which are very nice uh, for you know doing your zero 
pitch, uh, making it a little easier. So uh, on the fly, if you need to make an adjustment, you can kind of look at that. You can make sure you have equal throw both ways for the uh, pitch, things like that. Uh, but the head is very similar. It does not use that centerpiece like the M7. So this is a free floating, just like the regular helicopter, just like the M4. Um, it's basically just a, the head block itself, sorry, is uh, just like the M4 and M4 Max. Um, so it just uses the dampers themselves to dampen this and it doesn't have the centerpiece like the M7. All right, so let's get the canopy back on this thing so you see the beauty of it, because this thing is gorgeous. Side note real quick, the M7 style uh, canopy. So it has the little rubber grommets on the bottom of it. So you can just slide it back in and have no issues. All right, now we got the canopy on it, guys. You guys can see how gorgeous this pink is. Uh, this has really grown on me. I really wasn't for the pink. I kind of was, I wanted the green, uh, but the pink has really grown on me. It's got a lot of color to it. It's super bright. Um, and in the air you can see it, especially on like trees and things like that. Um, so if you fly in a place where there's a lot of trees, I recommend getting the brighter colors, like the white and pink or the white and green. Uh, so guys, let's go fly this thing and see how it performs. Um, I'm not gonna do any crazy 3D with it. I probably will do a little bit of 3D, but not as crazy as I would, because this still needs to be tuned. Uh, this is probably only gonna be like the third flight of it. So we will uh, see you guys out at the field. So let's go. I got a mean wind to my back. So hopefully you guys can hear a little bit of the flight. Let's go have some fun. Very windy out here. It's so windy out here, guys. Like I said, we're flying in about probably 30 mile an hour winds, gusting pretty high right now. This way you guys can at least see the helicopter. This is a fairly low head speed. I don't want to do any 3D with it in this high of wind, but at least fly it around and hear it. Very quiet. There's the wind. And that wind is taking it for a ride. You can hear that wind kicking it. Even with this big of a helicopter, it still kicks it around a lot. But I just wanted to make sure I got a little bit of a flight video for you guys, showing you what it looks like in the air. I mean, it's, it's windy out here, guys. And like I said, this isn't really tuned all the way. So it's still, it's getting blown away from me here. But it feels a lot like the M7. It's really fun to fly. A little hurricane here. Woo! Hard to bring it back this way. Like I said, it's super windy, guys, so it's hard to get a really good footage of this thing up close, so. All right, we'll bring it in before this wind decides to bring it in for me. Hey, look at how gorgeous that is. That glistening canopy. I mean, look at that thing. Beautiful. Like I said, guys, insane winds out here. So can't really go too crazy with it, but that is at least a really quick flight of the M5. And uh, I'm gonna end it here before the wind decides to end it for me. So I'll see you guys at the studio.
All right, guys, one quick thing I forgot to show you after that flight. Um, ESC is like slightly warm and then I can touch the motor. It's not even hot. Um, and like I said, I mean, it's warm, but I can hold my hand on it and not burn myself. So it has got a lot of power with not a lot of heat. So that's another cool feature. All right. All right, guys. So as you can see, this thing has got a ton of power. Um, and actually gets really good flight times too. It has really good presence in the air. The color just absolutely pops. Um, hopefully we can get some good pictures with this thing because it's absolutely gorgeous. And today it's nice and sunny out. It's a little windy out there, unfortunately. So couldn't do as much as I'd like, but uh, in Ohio right now, it's either gonna be windy or it's gonna be raining and cold. So I kind of have to pick my battles and just kind of fly through it. Luckily it's a bigger helicopter, so wind is a little bit of a factor, but not as much as it would be with a smaller one. So guys, if you have any questions about the M5 or M6, post them down below. I will be happy to answer them. Um, we will be getting an M6 kit to do a little overview on as well. Um, so that's coming in the future. So guys, stay tuned. Um, and like I said, if you have any questions, post them down below. Um, this kit was a lot of fun to build. It was actually really easy to build. I would I would say it's probably as easy as the M4 Max. Um, it uses the same kind of tail, that kind of building techniques. Um, so it's got a few more side panels and that's about it. But the head's about the same, all that kind of stuff. So guys, we'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And uh, we'll see you later.